Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to another week of our Wednesday night Bible study. I will be filling in for Ben this week as he and Joy are on their honeymoon. They got married last week on uh, New Year's Eve, actually. So uh, very happy for them and uh, just wishing them a very happy and joyful marriage as they continue to grow closer with each other, but also closer to God in that process. And last week, Ben talked about New Year's resolutions. And he said that, you know what, when we make our New Year's resolutions, in order for them to really be successful, we have to have a firm yes or firm no to something. And then he tied into how it is the exact same way with our spiritual resolutions. And honestly, in our relationship with God, that that if there's something in our life that, that is really hindering us from having that connect and intimate relationship with God, then we have to have a firm no to that. And also, if there's something that, that we really need to work on with God, that, then we need to have a firm yes. And so it's the exact same way with our physical resolutions and our spiritual resolutions, that we are called to be fully committed to God, to have a firm yes to God and say, you know what, God, I'm going to give it all to you and that no I am not going to to allow myself to fall into those temptations those things that I struggle with and so we need to have a firm yes and a firm no and my hope and prayer is that as we kick off this new year 2021 and as we start to wrap up this first week of the new year that with whatever spiritual resolutions that you made and, and how you're trying to just continually grow closer to God, that you are fully committing your life and having a firm yes to God. And so as we kind of jump in into our lesson tonight, we're going to spend some time in the book of Romans. And this message that I'm going to be talking about has really kind of been weighing heavy on my heart. Because, you know, honestly, 2020... I know it's in the rearview mirror now, but it was a rough year for all of us. And maybe it was, in, it was a rough way in, in a lot of different ways for you and for I and for just for people you know, but it was a rough year. And I think at times in our lives, things can just pile on top of us, right? I mean, bad news after another thing. I mean, just one thing after another, just bad news after bad news, bad things after bad things, and it just can pile right on top of us. I mean, you go from from having COVID-19 break out, and then that leads to having your family vacations being postponed, just sickness, maybe it's deaths in your family. I mean, churches all across the country last year were shut down, and people couldn't meet and worship together. Schools switched to online, things just going back and forth, so inconsistent, and just so on and so on and so on. And for a while now, it's just seemed like that we can never find something consistent, something reliable, and we just can't find peace. And I think 2020 was full of all of that stuff. And when we have all of that stuff going on in our lives, whether it's inconsistency, just despair, and and all this stuff, all of those bad things can, can produce hopelessness and loneliness in our lives. And I'm confident to say that all of us felt at least one of those things, whether it was despair, loneliness, hopelessness. I have a strong feeling saying that we at least felt one of those things over this past year. And so while 2020 is over, we've turned this new corner. There's no guarantee that's just all going to snap away just because we, we all get new calendars this year, right? And so tonight we are going to talk about peace and suffering and how much different life can be when we deal with suffering and pain as faithful followers of Christ. And so in order to begin that lesson, I'd like to just go ahead and jump right into our passage, our scripture that we're going to be in tonight, which is in Romans chapter 5. And we are going to be reading verses uh, 1 and 2 to start off with, and then we'll continue on with verses 3 and 5. So you can turn to your Bibles at home if you want, or or pull up the Bible app, whatever it is. Um, But I'm going to start in Romans 
chapter 5. And just to kind of give you a little bit of context of what's going on here in this chapter and in this book, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Rome. And during this time, Jews had previously been exiled from Rome. And just recently, they are being allowed back into the city. And so while this time where they were exiled and they were gone, they were out of, the, out of Rome, the Gentiles had kind of started to build up their own church. The, the Gentiles who believed in Jesus, they had developed their own church. And so as the Jews start to come back into Rome, they weren't all that fond of the fact that the, that the Gentiles had kind of started up their own thing and just continued on after they left. And so their heads kind of start to clash a little bit when the Jews and Gentiles start to meet again. And they're having issues back and forth. They're bickering with each other. They're like, well, you know, you, you, you don't even deserve to have salvation from God. We're the chosen people. And just all of this stuff back and forth. And so Paul is writing to the Jews and, and Gentiles to pretty much say like, look guys, we, we need to get over all of this stuff because it is not important. And what you guys have, despite all of your difference, there is so much more. There's so much greater that you share with one another. And that is that you have oneness in Jesus. You are unified through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if, you know, where you're from or what you look like, but we all are unified in Jesus and we all have his saving grace. And so let's go ahead and just kick off with where we're going to be at today, which again is Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 starts off and says, therefore, all right, let's just stop right there, all right, because whenever we see therefore, now this is the first verse into our lesson tonight and we're already stopping, so just bear with me, but whenever we see therefore in scripture, the author is referencing something that he has just said or something that he just went over with. Okay, so we need to kind of ask ourselves the same question. Okay, Paul, like you're starting off here with therefore, so what are you thereforeing about? And in the previous chapter, chapter 4, Paul has just finished up saying that we are justified, we are saved because of our faith in Jesus. So despite all of our sins, we are saved because of our faith in Jesus. Now, Paul isn't just saying that it's a casual, like, yeah, okay, I, I believe in Jesus, I guess. He's not saying that that kind of faith justifies us, but a true denying of self faith. The, the kind of the same one that Ben was talking about last week, a firm yes, a firm I commit my life to you, Jesus. That kind of faith justifies and saves us. And so, He's saying that, you know what, because of that. So when Paul picks up in chapter 5 and says, therefore, he is saying, okay guys, because of your faith in Jesus, this self-denying, 100% committed faith in Jesus, because of that, you are saved and you are considered clean and righteous before God. So because of that, now... So let's keep on reading. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Okay, so what... What does all of this mean, Paul? Like, can you kind of digest this for me a little bit here? And what I really think Paul is saying here to us is that Paul has pretty much just summarized the divine problem-solving skills of Jesus, okay? And so let, let's kind of go through these problems and solutions that Jesus has solved for us that Paul is really describing here in these first two verses of Romans chapter 5. So let's talk about problem number one. So, we as humans have sinned, right? We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And because of that sin, we are deserving of punishment. We, we have a sin problem. But Jesus solves that problem through his death and resurrection. As Paul is saying, is, and Paul is saying, like, like we've talked about earlier today, is that if you have faith in Jesus, we no longer have to deal with that problem of sin. We no longer have to deal with 
having death due to sin. And so that, that's kind of what he's saying there. He's like, okay, you are justified through faith. Problem number one solved. We don't have that problem of dying because of our sin, because of Jesus. Jesus did that for us. So what, what's, what's the second problem here of Jesus' divine problem-solving skills? Problem number two kind of almost relates to problem number one. But if we think about it, if we were full of sin before, right, then we can no longer have a connected and intimate relationship with God. Because God's very nature in itself, He cannot be associated with sin. So if we're full of sin, then of course God can't be connected with us. But again, because of Jesus, we don't have that problem anymore. And so because of Jesus, we are at peace with God. We can have a relationship with Him. And that's what Paul means in that second half of verse 1 when he says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's what he's saying there. He's like, hey, look, because we are justified through, through faith, because we no longer have a sin problem, not only are we saved, but we can actually have a relationship with God. Problem number three. If we didn't have Jesus, if you take Jesus completely out of the picture, then we as believers in God would have to be judged or considered righteous by if we followed all the laws. And so essentially, our salvation, the determining factor if we went to heaven or hell, would be determined if we ever broke the law or sinned. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely thankful that that is not the case. Because only one man ever did that, and that was Jesus. And so in, first, in verse 2 of Romans chapter 5, when Paul says, Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Paul is saying that our salvation is no longer dependent or relied upon us keeping the law. But we have been given this free gift of grace by God. And that free gift of grace is salvation through faith in Jesus. Okay, that's awesome, right? Like that is something that we get to have hope and something that we should be so thankful for. But Paul's not done. There's also another and final problem, problem number four. And again, you know what? If it weren't for Jesus, we would just simply have no hope, right? We would be hopeless. We would be in despair. We would be lonely. There would be no hope in the future. But because of Jesus, we can rejoice in the hope of God's glory. Because we know God's victorious. And that in itself is something that provides us sincere hope. And that's what Paul is saying here when he, cl when he closes out verse 2 and says, And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So those first two verses in chapter 5, Paul is saying like, Look, Jesus has fixed all of these problems for us, okay? Like I know before I was saying how we're justified through faith, but it's so much more than that. Jesus allows us to have salvation be only because of our faith in him. We, we don't have to worry about, about when we slip up, but Jesus gives us this gift of grace that we can be saved through him. And because of that, we can have peace with God. We don't have to worry about being enemies against God because we are saved. And we don't have to worry about this sin problem because Jesus washes that all away for us. And that is something so beautiful that we should cherish. And so while you may be sitting there thinking, okay, like I get all that. that that's all great, right? Jesus is a divine problem solver. He fixes a lot of issues for us. But where is this whole lesson even going? And that's kind of what I, what I want to get into next. And you may be sitting there asking yourself, okay, like, yeah, Jesus fixes all of these problems for us. Like, we're saved. We have peace with God. We can have hope. But what about all this pain and suffering in my life? Like, what about all of that? I mean, if I'm a follower of Jesus, and I mean, I, like, fully commit myself to God, shouldn't my life be full of joy and peace? I mean, you just said 
that Paul is telling us that, you know what, because of Jesus, we, we are at peace with God. But why is it that everywhere I look, there's just destruction, there's sadness, pain, suffering? Why is it that my life is just throwing so much pain at me? And what I'm here to tell you is that Paul isn't done here. And so let's keep on reading, okay? Let's continue on in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. So after Paul gets done saying everything we just talked about, he says, Not only so, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And let me tell you, I absolutely love this verse here, the, these couple of verses here. And you know what? This is something that we should hold on to. Because in this little snippet of Romans chapter 5 that we have read tonight, we, we see how Paul teaches us that, you know what? Because of Jesus... You and I, we are saved through our faith. And anyone who has faith in Jesus, they are saved. If that faith is 100% committed to Him, we are saved through our faith. And because of that, we're at peace with God. We can have that relationship with Him. And that is something we can have hope in. But not only that, Paul's not done. But because of our undenying and fully committed faith in Jesus, we can rejoice in our suffering. Now you may be thinking, Ryan, are you insane? How in the world can I rejoice in my suffering? How in the world can I have hope and peace and rejoice in my pain? How can I rejoice when when my parent died this year from COVID? How can I rejoice when I can't send my kids to school? How can I rejoice when every time I look, the world just seems to be fighting against each other? How can I rejoice in the fact that my entire household is sick and we can't do anything, we can't go anywhere? How in the world can I rejoice at the fact that I lost my job? How can I rejoice at the fact that I can't come to church and worship because of all the sickness and death going around. How in the world are you going to tell me that I can rejoice at that? And I'll be honest, I, I hear you and I completely understand. But Paul says that we can rejoice in our pain and suffering because God can use that pain in our life to produce something so much more. And what I want you to hear is that if we commit ourselves to be faithful and to be 100% committed to God, our pain and our suffering can be used by God to produce endurance in life. And that endurance can be used to produce character. And that character can lead to hope in Jesus. And coming from a man, the Apostle Paul, who was beaten, who was put in prison, and was virtually persecuted his entire faithful life to Jesus. I think that's something that we should listen to. And what Paul really does here in these last couple of verses of this passage that we're reading, when Paul says, not only so, but we can rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering can lead to endurance And endurance produces character, and that character produces hope. What Paul is doing here as he leads us on this journey, what he's doing is he's giving us a roadmap of how we can develop desirable attributes as a faithful follower of Jesus. Because when life gets tough, when sickness enters your family, when death hits your home, when things around you just seem to be crumbling and storms are surrounding you, what do you do? When pain and suffering seems to be the only thing that is consistent in your life, what do you do? Because when life gets tough, 
when suffering and pain hits, what Paul is telling us here is to turn to God and allow Him to use that pain and suffering to produce endurance, to produce character, because those things are going to lead us to hope. And that hope is something that is never going to let us down. That hope is going to be never disappointing because it comes from God's love. Because what Paul is really saying here is that, you know what, because Jesus is so great, because we are saved only through faith, because we have peace with God, not only all of that, but we can also rejoice in our sufferings because of Jesus. And just sitting there listening to that, do you even know like how absurd that sounds? If you were to go tell someone who is suffering and in pain because of things that have happened in their life, and you can just tell them, hey, look, like, as a follower of Jesus, you can rejoice even in that pain. Do you know how like, crazy that sounds? But as a committed follower of God, it is all so very real and so very possible because pain and suffering can be turned into something beautiful if it's handled in the way that Paul is describing here in Romans chapter 5. It can turn into joy and hope if we turn and remain faithful to God, even in the most challenging times. And I know that pain and suffering is is not something that, that we like to experience, of course. But as faithful followers of Jesus... If you commit yourselves to being a faithful follower, if you have a firm yes to God, whenever pain and suffering comes your way, you can have confidence knowing that you can still rejoice in that, knowing that God is working and moving in your life to produce endurance, to produce character, and to lead you to hope in Him. And you know what? Hope in in God is something that will never, ever disappoint us because He's victorious and He's always going to win. And you and I both know that life can throw some pretty crazy things at us. And we experience pain and suffering all the time, but all of that can turn into something positive if we give ourselves to God. Because even in the very midst of our pain and suffering, God can use that to produce endurance. And that endurance can lead us to produce character. And that character can lead us to have hope in God, which will never disappoint us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for each and every one of our listeners. And God, I just, I just pray that that you remind them of this passage in Romans chapter 5, where the Apostle Paul tells us that if we remain committed to you, and if we continue to be faithful, that even when life throws us crazy curveballs and pain and suffering hits, that we can still rejoice in that, knowing that you are still moving and working in our lives. God, I pray that you lean this heavy on our hearts as we, as we turn the calendar to this new year, that we can remain faithful to you so that when trials and tribulations come our way, that we can rejoice in them, knowing that you will work in our lives. God, thank you for all that you do. And most of all, we thank you for Jesus. And I pray all this in his precious and holy name. Amen.